have a touch the pad. Used. Now then crew and welcome back to the Andy Mechanic YouTube channel. Now this is a very quick video that I promised you a couple of weeks ago and specifically a young man called Simon Rawl from the UK. He's based in Jarrow, Tynum Weir. Now Simon, you sent me this across for the Atlas Copco air compressor which is just there look, on the hoist. Yes, I've dragged it out of the other barn to bring it down here to do this work. And Simon sent me this specifically, it's a second hand unit, he's obviously had it kicking around in his shed for a while. And he sent me this because, if you remember rightly, going right back to the original video on that air compressor, this part, plus another little bit that goes on there, uh, which I think was a prevented a vacuum building up in the tank, that was the other part, but anyway, we'll find out one day. Um, he sent me this because it got damaged in transit, and that was the whole reason why I bought the air compressor, because it was super cheap, uh, thanks to ISL Industrial over in Auckland. Now, this part is a non-return valve. So if we undo that uh, little screw at the end, just to clarify. Basically, what happens is the air from the pump on the air compressor comes in through here, and it goes into the tank via that bit there. And there's a, there's a one-way valve, so that's basically made up of a spring. There you go, look, a little spring. And it's done some work. And of course, a little seal. That seal, you can see by the wear on it, that sits inside there, look, on that ridge. So we'll just position that correctly again. And we'll pop that back on. And there's actually an O-ring around there as well, look. Pretty cool. I don't think my other one had an O-ring there. And then we'll just whiz that back up. So, the plan of attack is, and I haven't really had a good look to start off with, is to see if the one that Simon sent me will actually replace the one on the air compressor. Now, I have repaired the one on the air compressor and it doesn't leak at all. It works brilliantly. It was probably one of my best bodges ever. But if this is going to replace it, then we'll stick this on anyway because you know it's, it's not broken, is it? Now, just to give you some identification, I believe this is off an Italian air compressor. And the problem that I've been having, any more numbers? Yes, there you are. Look, there's more numbers on there. The problem I've been having is an awful lot of these uh, components look the same, but they aren't. There's lots of different variations of thread sizes. And because it's got three lots of thread on there, you know, getting the right sizes all on the one component can be quite, quite difficult to, to locate. But the good news is you don't need to buy these from the manufacturer. You can go onto eBay and over here in New Zealand to trade me. And you can pick these things up, new, as long as you know what you're buying, really cheap. Um, you know, as little as sort of five US dollars can get you a new one of these. Um, the manufacturer, Atlas Copco, here in New Zealand, the importers for that particular brand, um, that support the maintenance side, that provide the parts as opposed to the new unit. So the new unit was cheap. I got onto Atlas Copco themselves to buy one of these, and they wanted... Man, from memory, I think it was about 200 New Zealand dollars for one of these, and it really wasn't going to happen. I had to find an alternative. Plus, I needed to get the air compressor working really quickly to get the workshop up and running, because I can't move my motorcycle hoist up and down without compressed air. And they said, oh, it's going to be about six weeks. So, from the cost side of it and the delay, I didn't even bother to confirm the order, to be honest. It was just too much. So, thank you very much, Simon, for sending this through. Let's go and see if it's going to fit onto the air compressor. Right, to the hoist. Right, first job I suppose is to remove the little uh, sort of sensor pipe that goes to the switch. The pneumatic switch that basically turns the air compressor on and off depending on the pressure in the tank. So I'll just remove that. Pretty easy job. I think you've all seen this. Now all the threads were coated with thread lock just to help try and seal the whole thing up. Now obviously I don't want to go and break things now that I've... <laughs> now that I've fixed the damn thing. Oh, there we are, look. Get the olive out. Right, that can stay over there. Next job, this is the pipe coming from the pump, from the output of the pump, 
goes into the tank, it pushes open that one-way valve if the pressure in the pipe is higher than the tank, which it should be if the pump's running. So we'll just crack that off. It's important that you don't over-tighten these because they're only aluminium pipes. There was a time, a short time, that I actually repaired quite a few air compressors for people. It doesn't really happen anymore because, well, I don't have the time to do it to be honest, but it wasn't hard. And the, uh, the air compressor companies, man, they charge a fortune for it. Okay, so we've now removed that. Now, the little trick that I learned last time when we were taking this off was to take out the one-way valve. There we go. Because getting to the nut, the, the flanks that are cast into this piece back here, actually pretty hard, and you don't really get that much grip on the whole thing. So we undid this. We took out the one-way valve that's got water on it, look. Huh, fantastic. I have drained it. Right, that's that bit done. Oh, it has got an O-ring, look. Fantastic. And then we could put a big flat, a big round screwdriver, a posi hood screwdriver through there or a round bar and use that to undo it. Go and find a big screwdriver. Right, here goes. I haven't pre-loosened it. This is all real stuff, so I just want to ease that out of the way a bit. There we go. Now again, this was all thread taped. I think it was thread taped in. It might be thread locked in the camera now. Oh, well, that was easy. Is it going to turn all the way with that other bit on it? Hope so. Oh yes. Look at that. Bloody professional. Working around the camera as always. There we go. And this was ridiculously tight the first time out to do it. Absolutely mental. camera and it was tight on the threads all the way out like it is now there we go right perfect I think there was no thread tape I just put thread lock on it and that sealed it up quite nicely great stuff okay well we're gonna have a look at that at the bench bit later on but I just want to see first of all if the one that Simon sent is gonna fit so first of all threads oh man that looks a bit small doesn't it yeah sorry simon a bit bigger than that isn't it okay so that's not going to work um now these threads that will go onto there again that's not gonna not gonna fit in there those threads are a lot bigger and this piece just for shits and giggles as eric would say we can check to see if the threads inside there are the same as the one. Oh no, we can't. <laughs> I'll show you why. Okay. I'll tell you what, they do look very distinctly. Hang on, let's get rid of the olive. There we go. They look very distinctly like those threads. Yes, they are. So we've got one out of three. Okay, well, crap. There we go. Can't use that, unfortunately. Sorry, Simon. Right. So, the second part of the video is to show you what I did to fix this. And those of you that are quite astute will be able to spot what I've done just by looking at that picture. Let's go have a look on the bench. Right, I'm very conscious I don't, don't like this a long video because I do tend to ramble on, you all know that. Some of you like it, some of you hate it. So, Simon, apologies. It's not going to work on this particular air compressor. The thre some of the threads are too big. But it'll go in my bits drawer for air compressors, guarantee it. And one day, who knows, I may well be able to use that. If you want it sent back, let me know. I'll flick it back in the post to you. Okay, so how did Andy fix this one? And just to give you a quick idea, this component here, which I believe uh, prevents a vacuum buildup in the tank, has again has a, a valve in there. Unfortunately, I've had to disable that because there was a component missing on the inside. It should have had a second spring inside, wasn't there. So I don't want to show you how I fixed it. I fixed that bit. That really was a bodge. But anyway, it's sort of wedged shut at the moment. Um, so we're going to remove this off this it basically snapped clean off there and there's a male thread that protrudes or should have been a male thread that protrudes off this casting down into the threads which is where that uh, 
that union is at the moment on Simons. In fact, you need to have a look, don't you? So we'll use Simons as what it, this is what it used to look like. So just inside there, you can see that there's some threads. And the male part of that was snapped off and stuck in there. And if you're not sure, watch the original video and I'll put you a link at the end of this one. Okay, let's get this mounted in the vise and we'll take that off and I'll show you how I fixed it. Jeez. This is one of the hardest things to actually mount in the vise without damaging it. Okay, let's give that a go. Pliers. Pipe wrench, we'll use one of those. Okay, so watch in anticipation, I'm sure. Don't want to damage the threads on the end of there, but we should be all right, I think. Oh, there we go. Right. So this was done really as a needs must operation. I really had to get the air compressor working. And I was actually getting pretty fed up with trying to find a part for the right sort of price that could be supplied quick enough. And I ran plenty of places and not that many of them really knew what was needed. Okay. I've got to think back to what I did now. Right, so there are two sort of issues going on here. We'll just remove those copper washers out of the way. And you can see I put plenty of thread lock on this stuff just to help seal it all up. So I grabbed, you can see down here, looks pretty good camera angle. I grabbed uh, an M8 bolt and uh, I basically used the head to mount the bolt in the lathe. And I drilled, I think, about a three mil hole, full length of that bolt. And then, leaving the internal, the, the male thread off this component, which had broken off, I then tapped that out M8. Now, you may go, oh, hang on a minute, that's a tiny little hole. That's not bloody good. You know, there's not going to be much flow through there. Well, fortunately, there doesn't need to be a lot of flow, because running off here is that sensor pipe to the, um, the pneumatic solenoid, which controls the air compressor on and off, depending on the tank pressure. And this, all this is doing is feeding it tank pressure. So then I screw, uh, basically, you know, wound this in with some thread lock into there, and then did exactly the same thing on this side. I tapped it out M8 just inside there. Look, now unfortunately it wasn't a perfect, perfect drilling. It was, a, it wasn't quite in the middle, but it did did the job. It was all right. We've sort of pulled it off. There was enough meat there to put the threads on. And remember, this side was just casting. You know, the, there was a protrusion coming out of here forwards, which was the male threads that would have normally gone into there. So there was, you know, I wasn't having to worry about removing any of the old threads that were in there, anything like that. It was, it's what the, this, what's here now is one solid piece of casting. Brass, I believe. So then I wound that down and noticed there was a bit of a gap between the edge of here because you know there's a potential of getting leaks down past the threads so that well I know what I'll need to do I'll just get a couple of copper washers and take up the gap so give you an idea if I thread that back onto there look like that and obviously that couldn't that could not bottom out inside because obviously it would block any air going down and it would sort of seal it off that would like a tap so I then used a couple of copper washers, these, just to fill in that gap there, to give it a sort of secondary sealing surface. And believe it or not, it worked brilliantly. I was quite chuffed, and it didn't take too long to do either, so very happy with that. So for those of you who are wondering, that's how I fixed it. And it works great. So there you have it. It's going to have to continue to be used, and his bodged valve but it did the job, didn't it? So for those of you that are wondering how I fixed it, then there you go. Not the best idea. My original choice was to fit a new one, but this still works and it's working great and it doesn't leak. So if it ain't broke, which it isn't now, don't fix it. <laughs> Thanks, Simon. Do appreciate it, mate. And like I say, if you want this sending back, just let me know and I'll flick it in the post for you. Okay, crew, well, if you enjoyed the video, why not click on the subscribe button? You'll see a little gear icon turn up. Click on the gear icon, and then you can tick the box and turn on notifications. And our friends at YouTube, well, they'll send you an email as and when I upload any new videos. You'll also find me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. No more Google+. That's gone as of today, I believe, 1st of April. 
Is it the first? No, tomorrow. Gone as of midnight tonight. Um, okay, what else? Yes, there's also a Patreon page. Drop onto that. You can read all about the history of the channel, Tool Girls, their profiles, up and coming projects, all that kind of stuff. And of course, you can become a patron on there too. All right, chaps. Well, until next time, cheers. Over and out. Get the oh, yeah.